Hi, this is Gail Walters with biztalk-training.com, and today I'm talking with Yogi Veda about an enterprise service bus or ESB implementation that we just did. We basically built our own custom ESB based on some principles in the ESB guidance that's published by Microsoft. The main goal was that any system in the orchestration had to operate or talk to each other without knowing that any other systems existed. Otherwise, it would have been just another point-to-point -point system. So, Yogi, why don't you tell us about the common message format that we came up with? Well, we came up with a corporate-wide canonical XML message as the common messaging format, which held all the potential business uh, fields which were pertinent for the entire uh, corporation to use. Data governance had to do a lot of work in defining what each element was and what they were called in each system. Any incoming data would be mapped to that particular message in that particular field, I'm sorry, in the common XML, and then it's sent to the ESB for processing. So in essence, that the ESB would only understand the common messaging format, so any interface would have the job of mapping it to the uh, common messaging format. Uh, Neil, why don't you tell us about uh, the data flow? Okay. The way I see it, there's basically two ways to control the data flow, and I've used one of these methods in two different companies. Um, one is to do it with a master orchestration, which can cross system boundaries, and it calls various other orchestrations that are specific to individual applications. The other is to do it with itineraries, which can be controlled by the business rules, and that's how we did it in the recent implementation. In our current project, we use business rules to add steps to what we call an itinerary. Then the ESB core orchestration processes those itineraries. Our ESB is controlled by an XML structure that we call the header, and it's basically at the top of every XML message. It indicates what the current step is, all the steps that you've done already, and then the steps that have yet to be completed. Basically a tracking system for that itinerary. So, Yogi, what about screen-based applications? Can, can GUI applications talk to the ESB? Of course. I mean, the whole point of ESB is that any application should be able to talk. So what we did was we published some orchestrations as WCF or ASMX web services, and the user interface could consume those web services and send us the data required. So that way we were able to interface with that. Uh, well, Neil, why don't you tell us, tell the audience uh, something about the link and the data layer we created. Well, we decided to use Link even though it was a, a new Microsoft technology for our data application layer, and we wrapped it with WCF Web Services. Probably the majority of our challenges were in this area rather than actually the BizTalk area. Um, basically, one common XML format that we had gets persisted into a relational database, and Link provided that mapping from the XML to the relational. Uh, if we were to do it again, though, what I would consider is using the XML data column, which is a feature of SQL 2005 and 2008, rather than a structural uh, relational structure. But on the other hand, the relational structure is very good for the uh, reporting services and the reporting environment that a lot of companies have. Um, a while ago, I mis mentioned the concept of itinerary. Yogi, why don't you elaborate on this a little bit? Well, uh an itinerary would sort of be a travel plan for the message based on the current information the message can provide to the itinerary processor. There can, however, be two types of itineraries. Uh, one would be the predetermined, and the other would be the dynamic itinerary. The predetermined, as the name suggests, is when the steps are always the same for a particular business process, whereas the dynamic itineraries is the uh, sort of like a, when when a message or when a when a particular step is determined based on the preceding steps uh, result or, or some of the fields that the preceding step might have or the values that the preceding step might have. That's about what I can t tell about the itineraries. So Neil, okay. what are the some of, what are some of the lessons that you've learned or we have learned from the ESP? Well, I could probably write a few pages, but I'll try to summarize a couple here. Um, first of all, you really have to understand correlation and direct binding when you're developing an ESP core, the way it talks to all the other orchestrations in the system. 
Um, another thing that was really kind of a pain was when we changed the common message format, it can basically ripple through and affect all our different applications. So you should basically finalize that as early as you can in your development so that you can minimize impact to all the different developers. And uh, again, I think we took the right to pick and choose some of the concept, concepts that were in the ESP guidance from Microsoft rather than just taking it right off the shelf and implementing it exactly as it is. Well, what about you? Any other lessons learned? Well, you are definitely right about picking and choosing from the guidance because you don't need everything always. But I guess in the end, we did implement a lot of complex processing using correlation, business rules, and convoys. Overall, I think we accomplished the goal of unifying, let's say, about a dozen different systems using the ESB. Okay. Well, thanks for being with me today, Yogi. This is uh, Yogi Veda and Neil Walters with biztalk-training.com. And please check our website for more videos and articles about new and upcoming things with BizTalk. Bye, Neil.